I'm very happy to welcome uh, our first speaker, who is Daniel Finch Race, uh, Vice Chancellor's Fellow at the University of Bristol. And his primary research blends the environmental humanities with 19th century French culture. Uh, just to mention a few of his many publications, um, he has published, for instance, in French Ecocriticism. Uh, he will publish very soon a, a book entitled Poetics of Place. And I'm very glad to have one of the representatives of this uh, eco-criticism uh, school that we are very interested in in France because we are following you in many ways uh, in our studies at the moment in, in Paris. So, uh, and I want to mention that your title has changed uh, since the program was printed and it's now sensing the nature of Northern French smokestacks from the 1860s to the 1880s. Thank you. Daniel. Hello, everybody. Great pleasure to be here. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, I just want to say um, a big thank you, uh, first of all, to uh, Frédéric and to Philip for the invitation. Um, it's wonderful to be here kind of at this occasion um, to see uh, many old friends um, and uh, to make some new ones too. So um, just to uh, give you an idea of uh, the sorts of things that I'm going to be talking about today, uh, this is uh, the beginning of a new project. Um, so uh, particularly thinking about uh, representations um, of uh, climate change uh, through uh, industrialization um, at the end of the 19th century. So uh, I thought a, a good place to start today, uh, just to talk you through some ideas, was uh, particularly looking at uh, paintings, um, as uh, Frédéric mentioned, from uh, the 1860s to the 1880s. So um, I have a selection of paintings um, that I've divided into three parts uh, that we shall discuss shortly. But um, just to uh, give you an idea to start with, so um, the painting that you see here, um, which is the Guillaume, um, it's uh, thinking through already some of the ideas that I'm going to touch on later. So um, the three elements that are going to interest me um, in terms of dimensions initially um, are to do with, um, with height, with width, um, and then depth. Um, and this painting in particular, as you can see, can, with the, the single point perspective um, and the smokestacks over to the right-hand side, um, makes us already think about um, the way in which can, that painting is constructed um, in a way that then uh, we can think about um, how uh, those uh, smokestacks kind of, and those environments that contain those smokestacks uh, were affected by the presence of that industry. So uh, we shall come to these specific examples shortly, um, but just to give you an idea, um, I will uh, be talking in uh, three sections effectively. Um, so uh, the first part will be um, an overview of the way in which um, people have tried to bring together um, art history and uh, eco-criticism. Uh, then uh, there will be uh, this tripartite division um, of the paintings uh, to do with smokestacks. So um, here I have a set of formulae for you. Um, I don't know if you thought you were going to be doing mathematics this morning, but here you are. Um, so uh, basically smokestacks uh, plus sky, making us think about height. Uh, smokestacks um, and then the fields um, to make us think about width. Um, and then uh, smokestacks um, and rivers uh, to make us think about depth. And then uh, the conclusions that I'm heading towards, which are in four dimensions, are really um, thinking about uh, the temporality of these representations. So um, what I'm uh, looking forward to um, is really about how we think time in different ways uh, by looking at these paintings, um, and they encourage us to think about time in different ways. Um, and also, as you can see from my title, how um, the uh, paintings invite us to use uh, different kinds of senses, because we tend to think of painting as primarily a visual medium. And what I want to propose today is actually that these paintings in particular encourage us to think otherwise. Um, so, just to give you an idea of some of the uh, theory um, that I've been thinking about you know, in this area, um, just to to start off with, and I, I would be uh, really appreciative if anybody has any more suggestions in this area, um, to just to, to start by saying um, that uh, the theory that I've found so far has been predominantly to do with art history um, in a North American context um, and indeed in a British context. Um, so 
Uh, this seems to be an emerging area, and I'm aware of um, publications that are going to be coming out um, in 2019, which are bringing together art history and eco-criticism edited volumes and so on. Um, but in terms of uh, the work that exists already, um, there was uh, a, basically a special section um, of, uh, kind of a, a Journal of American Art, which came out a few years ago, which was uh, in which this uh, first article featured, uh, which is asking us, as you can see, um, to uh, think about um, the way in which landscape paintings kind of have um, traditionally been seen as a way of making nature into something that um, isn't an ecosystem. So in fact, the, there isn't a sense of the deeper implication of uh, what is being depicted in landscape painting. So um, here, what I'm uh, asking you to think about um, and what I'm wanting to explore at more length is precisely that idea of um, going beyond uh, this, sen uh, this sense of uh, landscape painting as a set of motifs um, and forms that are uh, simply recognizable. Um, and this second collection here, which came out in 2009, um, which kind of is um, a, a great book. If, I, if you ever get a chance to read it, I'd recommend it, which is A Keener Perception. Um, and, um, and yes, and so this, here it's a, an attempt really to say about how we can conceive of an eco-critical art history. Um, and here, as you can see, there are two elements, um, kind of, or at least, well, there are at least two elements that interest me, but kind of two key elements that I identify. Um, and so it's here about uh, having a more environmentally aware and responsive interpretation of artworks, uh, part one, and then part two, the sense of actually taking the painting and defamiliarizing the painting, and that's going to be very important. I'm going to come back to that idea about defamiliarization uh, in a second. Uh, but just to say, so those are two uh, sort of more general works. Um, and uh, in terms of interpretations of 19th century French art, which is particularly the material that's going to interest us today, um, there have been a few, and you will see um, that these have appeared, the first two at least have appeared in certain places that are close to my heart. Um, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, the contributors to um, not only kind of the, uh, the Dizneuf special issue, but the uh, L'Esprit Créateur number as well, including people who are in the room here today. Um, and just to say, kind of the, uh, kind of the, the work by uh, uh, Karen and Pauline, kind of in these areas, kind of is, you know, I think, incredibly rich, and kind of, and uh, heading into promising directions. So uh, there's a sense in which that's been working. And this, so Maura, I, I only recently met, in fact, an, an, uh, an event in St Andrews a few weeks ago, which was about uh, Breton uh, literature, um, and we got talking kind of uh, about ideas and representations of the Breton landscape. Um, and so kind of if you, uh, I would encourage you just to go away and see the, the, the sort of work that's being done there. But to, basically to, uh, to give you an idea that there are some fairly canonical works um, that are now being addressed and, kind of, and uh, given uh, new and compelling interpretations, um, uh, not least by uh, these three women. Um, so the element that I want to focus on um, the, today, really, kind of in terms of the things that I've been reading recently, um, and in fact, I, I don't know um, if... Is Nicholas is in the room because I was told by Philip that he might come. But anyway, um, we'll come back to that. But so these um, two pieces that I've seen, and um, uh, James Rubin's uh, book, and which obviously came out a few years ago now, back in kind of in 2008. But here, kind of one of the uh, ideas that I've been thinking about is particularly to do with man-made elements in the landscape. So here, kind of the way in which kind of we think about um, impressionism and this idea of human control. Okay, so there's certainly kind of an idea that we can recognize in terms of humans shaping the landscape in Impressionism. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I really want to look at is this idea of an infrastructure. So not necessarily transportation and commerce, but an infrastructure you know, which is uh, particularly to do with the way in which industry is spreading kind of over the landscape. And we shall come back to that. Um, but this, um, this article in particular, this is uh, something which is core to what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, which is, it's a great article, and again, highly recommended if you want to go away and have a read. Um, so this came out in, in Public Culture a few years ago, um, Visualising the Anthropocene. Um, and this takes, um, as one of its key case studies, um, Impression Sunrise. Uh, you know, so you know, about a painting in which you know, we all know, kind of, um, you know, we could uh, talk about kind of for hours on end, but I'm not going to focus on it today. Um, but just to say that as a starting point, um, one of the things kind of that uh, we're looking at there is not just about an aesthetics of the Anthropocene, so the way in which can we look at the Anthropocene and the way in which again, we can perceive um, a certain kind of ecology, a certain kind of uh, setup in paintings in this period, but actually the element that interests me is the anesthetization. 
that's there. So these anesthetics of the Anthropocene. So the way in which, in fact, elements are being normalized, um, and particularly here, industry, the way in which we have this sense, and I was just talking about this with Jeanne, in a, so the idea in which the industry fades into the background and it becomes normalized. And in fact, where we see prominent chimneys, or prominent smokestacks, Kind of in uh, kind of paintings from earlier years. Uh, kind of, in fact, what happens as we go on, and this is where we're going to get to at the end of the presentation, there are elements which are very much to do with um, the representation of industry as um, something which has just been accepted, something which, uh, kind of in a sense, kind of is there, but it's not a huge area of concern. And of course, what I'm trying to do is to train, change that discourse and actually bring those elements out of the background and into the foreground in those particular cases. So. We shall come to that shortly. Um, but after that uh, brief sense kind of, of the sort of things that I'm thinking with and through at the moment, I just want to give you um, uh, basically a, a, here a, a representation kind of, of the, the paintings that I'm talking about and the locations in particular. So uh, there's a painting by Monet, which uh, is a bit of an outlier here in the sense that it, uh, talks, that it represents Rouen. Um, but I, I think it's important, particularly in the, uh, kind of the thing that we're going to be looking at uh, kind of in that element, which is to do with rivers. Um, but otherwise, these are generally in the area around Paris. Kind of, and um, one of the elements kind of that kind of you will notice is, and, kind of, and again, you know, this is something uh, kind of that Pauline and I were just talking about before, some of these areas actually probably will have changed beyond recognition now. Kind of, so a lot of them kind of have uh, been uh, taken into the urban sprawl. Um, but uh, there is, I think, kind of something in very important here about them being on a horizon line, some sort of development um, kind of in uh, not only the landscape, but um, industry and the painting of that. So um, to move to my first set of examples, so I, I have two paintings here which um, uh, really kind of are um, being addressed in terms of the representation of the smokestack and the sky. Um, so here, kind of thinking about height, the way in which kind of, these paintings uh, really draw our attention to that uh, vertical dimension. And of course, here, you know, I'm indebted to Federico having uh, kind of already made us think about you know, these uh, sorts of dimensions in verticality kind of, and what rises and what falls. So uh, let's turn to that uh, as a, an initial case here. So uh, this painting, so this is um, a kind of a, an early painting by Pizarro, or an early painting in terms of the period that I'm talking about. Um, so, kind of, as you can see, kind of um, end of the 1860s, um, and this is uh, the banks of uh, the Oise at Pontoise. Um, and what is quite striking here, as you can see straight away, is this single chimney in the centre of the painting, um, occupying the middle kind of, of the painting, and indeed the plume that then rises into the top third. Um, and uh, for me, this is a painting which is very much um, about the vertical, about height. Um, as you can see kind of, uh, on the uh, rightmost extreme of the painting, there is the, the tree, which in a sense is giving this frame, which parallels the line of the smokestack itself. Um, we have um, the uh, human figure here pretty much uh, kind of at the center of the painting in the bottom third, uh, kind of which kind of, again kind of leads us to look f up towards the sky. And in fact, of course, the figure is facing away from us, kind of is encouraging us to look towards the smoke and to grapple with what the, the, the plume of smoke is doing in the air above the river. Um, and in a sense, you know, there is a, the, the horizontal dimension, which is suggested by um, you know, the, the water flowing past kind of, and the, the houses that are there, is, I, I would suggest, subsumed to thinking about the vertical. Uh, and of course, in terms of the painting more generally, of course, we, we have the, um, the sense of the contrast um, between you know, this light blue sky, these very fluffy clouds in the background, um, and, and the grey uh, plume of smoke. So you know, the, the very noticeable, not only the actual architecture of the smokestack itself, but the production kind of, of the pollution that is emerging from it. So here, one of the ideas that I um, would like you to think about really is to do with um, how the smoke obviously, you know, not only rises into the air, kind of, and in terms of you know, the the carbon-based particulates, the xenobiotic matter that is coming out of the chimney and is spreading kind of over the landscape, but particularly where that then is going to fall. And there's a second painting here that kind of, I want to kind of, look at in this case, which is really about um, the way in which kind of the sky kind of is um, taken up. Um, by the smoke, kind of, and in fact, there is a, a sense in which, kind of, here, industry is not just—it's not specifically about um, the what the space that it occupies on the land, but actually the spread of the smoke 
uh, through the sky. Um, and here, so um, this is uh, Guillaume, so uh, this is uh, near um, Ivry, this is uh, the Seine. Um, and here, um, just to say, so this is uh, about the same time as Monet's um, Impression Sunrise. Um, so this is 73, a year after Impression Sunrise. Um, and here, kind of, again, kind of, we see very prominent plumes of smoke from uh, the cluster of smokestacks uh, kind of in uh, the centre right of the painting, kind of, again, kind of in the middle third um, on the horizon line. And here, I mean I, I mean, I just think this is a wonderful painting anyway. I mean, I, just, you know, the, I love the representation of the sunset. Um, uh, but, uh, but here, kind of, again, you know, the contrast between kind of the, the colours kind of in the sky, kind of, the, kind of this bright, uh, fierce uh, yellow and orange that we see over the city, um, and the plumes of smoke kind of, which are billowing kind of, towards uh, the left-hand side uh, of the painting. Um, here, again, you know, if we think about the fact that in terms of the proportions of the painting, um, the smokestacks themselves may be minimal, although, of course, they are clustered together and we have this sense of a density of smokestacks, uh, what kind of is really happening is we are thinking very much about the sky. I mean, so we think that effectively two-thirds of the painting at the top of the painting is really about the vertical. Okay, then here kind of, we, are, kind of, we are looking at the kind of way in which the, the smoke occupies a large part of that. Um, and again here, spreading kind of over these structures and kind of, um, spreading kind of um, in the direction kind of, if we can think about kind of over the water kind of, and indeed kind of over the, kind of the spaces which are here. Um, so again, kind of the, the spread kind of of the plumes kind of uh, into the sky and the way in which they will then fall kind of back kind of onto the landscape. And so here, um, what, by looking at these two paintings, when I'm asking you to think about sensing kind of the nature of these smokestacks, it's not just about seeing the smoke you know, but actually, kind of what these uh, these paintings ask us to think about is um, activating other senses. So, you know, what we would be smelling, okay, near these factories, okay. And so, you know, and thinking about that, there is a, an element kind of which I shall come back to, which is perhaps to do more with the the, the tactile kind of element, kind of. But you know, the things that you would be smelling and indeed perhaps hearing, kind of, to which we shall return later on. But just to, to gesture towards that as we begin. Um, and uh, the other thing you know, that I just want to mention here kind of is uh, particularly to do with um, the materiality of the painting itself. Um, so here um, there is a, kind of an element, kind of, and this is something that I'm still wanting to think through more, uh, but I, I, here kind of a lot of my thinking has been informed by uh, discourses on uh, material eco-criticism, most notably through the, the wonderful work of uh, Serenella Uvino and Serpil Opperman, so uh, the edited volume that came out uh, in 2014, and indeed more recent work, um, kind of, uh, particularly there's a, an article that Serpil just published in Mosaic uh, in a special issue on scale, which I'd encourage you to read if you um, have an opportunity. Um, but here, kind of, the ma actual material aspect kind of, of um, the painting itself um, and within the painting, so the sort of storied matter kind of, that we can think about in terms of the plumes of smoke that are emerging uh, from uh, the, the smokestacks, but also about the materiality of the painting itself, and something that I want to look into more, um, but I, I don't necessarily have the data to share with you today, is specifically about how the painting itself and kind of the, the textures of the painting um, could well be um, imbued with like, a sense kind of, of the pollution kind of, that is spreading over the landscape. That's something perhaps we could talk about later because it's an idea that I'm still thinking through. Um, but to move to my second set of examples, um, so here this is uh, smokestacks um, and fields. So here this is particularly to do with the idea of width. Um, and uh, one of the things kind of, that uh, comes across here, so as you can see uh, kind of from uh, kind of this uh, first example, uh, so uh, here this is Signac, so this is uh, again kind of the area near Paris, uh, near Paris. Uh, this is uh, Genevilliers or the road on the way to Genevilliers um, and we have um, smokestacks in the centre of the painting again in the middle of the painting but um, here what you'll notice in contrast to the two prior ones that I've shown you, in fact this is, this is almost that sense of us uh, recognising uh, kind of a moment of um, of anaesthetics here, that we're becoming anaesthetized to industry. It's uh, kind of the, the plumes of smoke are nowhere near as prominent kind of, as in the two paintings that I showed you um, before, and in a sense, kind of here, the industry kind of is very much in the background uh, to a scene kind of which is otherwise kind of to do with 
uh, thinking about kind of the, the fields that are here. Um, and obviously, kind of in terms of um, industry being displaced uh, by a certain idea of nature that is here, kind of the uh, chimneys in the background, kind of the human settlement in the background is dwarfed by the trees, kind of which uh, can provide these uh, vertical frames kind of and encourage us to look towards the centre of the painting where the plumes are. But the plumes, as I say, kind of much smaller and occupying a much lesser part of the painting than is evident kind of in the, the other two that I've mentioned. And here, uh, the element that I, I would ask you to think about is precisely the way in which we're thinking about horizontality. Okay, so here, kind of, we are uh, encouraged uh, kind of by uh, kind of the, the foreground here uh, to think across the painting, and again, kind of to think through uh, the plume kind of moving horizontally towards the right-hand side of the frame. Um, and this uh, sense of uh, material uh, spreading uh, kind of over uh, the landscape um, but uh, in a way uh, that is uh, not being brought to the foreground in the same way that we have seen before. So uh, this is an element to which we will return. And just to show you by way of contrast, kind of that this kind of is kind of something which kind of is intention kind of in this period. Um, here we have um, Van Gogh, um, and so this kind of is uh, kind of, again kind of a painting kind of of, um, kind of the area uh, around Paris. This is cliche. Um, and you can hear the representations kind of of smokestacks having a much more prominent place in the painting. Um, and uh, kind of again, just to say kind of that we have kind of these uh, disparate smokestacks uh, scattered um, across uh, kind of the, the, the center, um, uh, kind of scattered across kind of the, uh, the middle of the painting. Um, and again, kind of here, particularly kind of this uh, one, kind of the, the, the one that is nearest to us occupies again a prominent place as we head into the top third with uh, the different plumes of smoke. So. Uh, to me, this is a, a, a painting which um, uh, goes counter to the sense of um, industry being subsumed into the landscape. And in fact, if anything, this uh, image for me shows the tension between okay, this, this idea, kind of this very familiar style of depicting fields that we know from Van Gogh here, um, and kind of, indeed kind of the, the industry, which is then uh, with the, the plumes of smoke that are spreading kind of, and kind of encourage us to think about, as I say, thinking across here. So not just spreading over kind of the area of um, the houses and, kind of, and the, kind of the buildings that are there, um, but particularly um, to do with you know, the way in which that is getting into the fields. And here, um, I haven't included it today, but um, I, because I'm, I'm quite conscious of the fact as well that you will notice that the, the paintings that I've used are uh, generally uh, by male painters. And one of the things that I'd like to look into more um, is actually about uh, representations of uh, industry kind of, and smokestacks by female painters. So one of the paintings that this makes me think of, um, and kind of, I'd like to look into it more, but it, it, it's, it's in a much less marked way, is Morisot's um, Dans les Blés, uh, kind of where you see kind of the, the chimneys, the, the smokestacks kind of in the left-hand side, but kind of in, a, in a very minor position on the left-hand side, where you have kind of the figure and the fields. But again, much like the Van Gogh here kind of, and the Signac to a certain extent, what, those, what that painting makes me think of is particularly the way in which, um, and this was something that was being mentioned in the first panel, is um, the way in which then um, these particulates, kind of these elements that are produced by the chimneys, uh, get into the fields um, and then get into our bodies. You know, so either the, you know, we are um, directly consuming things that are being grown in the fields, uh, kind of, and then you know, the way in which that then becomes part of us, um, and uh, can this is uh, a conversation that we could look into more you know, in terms of then how that transfers from, from just the painting that makes us into kind of a real corporeal uh, kind of uh, understanding of what this art means. Um, but also uh, the way in which kind of, it affects other organisms that are present, uh, kind of, and uh, and then that could work its way through uh, kind of, um, into kind of our uh, food chain. But also the way in which it just affects other organisms who have value in their own right. Um, so uh, the final section that I want to turn to uh, before concluding is um, smokestacks and rivers. So here, this is primarily about depth. Um, kind of, and so uh, depth, uh, kind of in terms of uh, the depth of the painting going um, sort of away from us, as it were, if we're thinking kind of in, kind of in the three dimensions, the representation of you know, an, an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis, um, but also in terms of going down kind of into the river itself. Um, so here, this is the painting that I was mentioning before. This is the Monet. Okay, so this is uh, the Robeck Brook um, near Rouen, um, well, in Rouen. Um, and uh, and here, kind of, this is uh, kind of a, 
a kind of a painting again where you can see you know there is a, a sense of um, the chimneys kind of being uh, very present in the painting but they kind of move towards uh, the background so um, here kind of we have you know, the buildings kind of and we have kind of the water coming towards us in a sense of a, um, a sort of a single point perspective in the center right uh, of the painting um, but here kind of the, the chimneys kind of in the background and these plumes of smoke which again occupy the top third of the painting kind of and are very evident the, the contrast between the blue sky the white clouds and the gray smoke um, but one of the things that kind of, uh, the reason I mentioned the single point perspective is um, because uh, one of the things that this is encouraging us to do through kind of the portrayal of um, the buildings, the portrayal of the water, um, is uh, really kind of then to think about kind of how uh, industry kind of is uh, is present kind of and um, and asks us um, not only uh, to think about uh, what's happening kind of with uh, the smoke kind of and the particulates going into the water. And the way in which can then that mixes with the water, and this is the example that I'm going to come to next, where that, in a sense, is very evident. Um, but okay, not only that element, but in the, the, the way in which okay, if we are um, moving towards a background of industry. Industry is just present, and you know, and these uh, plumes of smoke which rise okay, over over the, the landscape, over the okay, the, the cityscape, um, are in a sense something that is just there, that is just present, that is just accepted. Uh, rather than challenged or put into question, and this and that idea is most evident in this next painting, which uh, again, you know, thinking about canonical paintings of canonical paintings of canonical paintings of this period, um, you know, this is uh, Seurat, this is um, the uh, bathers uh, at Anières, um, and just an opportunity here to big up the National Gallery in London, if I may, um, uh, but just to say, you know, this painting, and, and I was very fortunate actually, I, uh, I was able um, to go down just before I came here. Um, to go down to the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. Um, and see the preparatory sketches uh, kind of, uh, for this uh, that uh, Sera produced. And it, it was very um, enlightening for me to see, in fact, that one of the elements that was present there was uh, a focus on the chimney and the smokestack. Um, and uh, kind of, so uh, uh, there was a sense of a, a, a figure in repose, similar to this one here. Um, but the, the element that was most striking was not the river, was not the figure, but the, the smokestack and the smoke. Um, and so, so to actually see that the, that the way in which that then gets transformed in this painting is quite interesting because the, the, the chimney, if anything, here is much less present. And kind of, again, kind of it's moved into the background because kind of we have this single plume of smoke. Yes, we have a, a cluster of smokestacks around it, but most of them aren't active. Um, so, and in, obviously, kind of in terms of the the colour, kind of and the contrast here, that the plume of smoke is almost less evident. The visibility is lower than in many of the other paintings, um, and and of course, this painting kind of tends to be kind of read in a way kind of which is to do with uh, leisure, kind of which is kind of to do with um, kind of escaping from industry, escaping from the city. Um, there's been a lot of focus on the the figure um, submerged, uh, partially submerged, uh, kind of in the river on the right, um, in the the red cap. Um, and again, so you know, to me, this is a painting which makes us think about depth, it makes us think about the depth of the river, kind of, and, kind of, and again, the, the single point perspective as we're moving away to the centre left this time, um, thinking about um, kind of if we actually attend to um, the the plume of smoke coming out of the smokestack, the way in which that would spread over the water, kind of, and, kind of, and then be present, kind of this, as I was mentioning earlier, this xenobiotic matter be present in the water, and a scene which is supposed to be, in a sense pleasant about nature being enjoyed and kind of a constructed concept of nature yes but certainly about you know, this the landscape being enjoyed and then the way in which the imbibing of the water is actually in, in a sense imbibing the particulates that could be coming from um, the smokestack so here there is a, a for me there is a tension which is this is a painting which says okay we have become anesthetized to industry to the anthropocene um, and in fact, we just accept it, it's there in the background. But what I want to do is to haul us back kind of, kind of from that moment kind of, and to say, actually, kind of this, the, the smoke site that exists in the background, the smoke kind of, is kind of a point of real concern. And indeed, I kind of, um, here kind of in this moment, kind of, we could think about um, not just, you know, again, not just visualizing the smoke, but kind of, would we be able to smell that? Kind of, you know, the, the, the sense of what we would be hearing in this painting Kind of would much would, would be much more to do with human activity, the flow of the water, and so on, um, and so the the sense in which industry has faded into the background kind of is something that we can think through if we look at the different senses that would be being activated here. So, um, in conclusion, um, I, just to say kind of that those um, the paintings that kind of I've been talking about um, encourage us 
um, to think um, in four dimensions. And so as I was mentioning at the beginning, the fourth dimension is time. So one of the things that I want to uh, emphasize here is really that moment where um, it's not just about the time that the chimney is active kind of, and the impact that the chimney has on the landscape when it's produced, but actually kind of the, uh, the lag kind of, that is there kind of, and the way in which kind of, that, uh, that what is produced kind of, will then uh, spread kind of, and then we'll, kind of, we'll get back into different cycles of time that are perhaps not just to do with kind of, what is happening during the active hours of the chimney. Um, and of course, this is uh, uh, what Chakrabarti kind of is asking us to think about kind of when, we, when we look at those articles, which are about thinking um, climate change and thinking the Anthropocene on the uh, micro scale. So kind of thinking about kind of these examples here and macro scales at once. So kind of trying to ask us to think about time in different ways, kind of the ways in which the paintings encourage us to do that. Um, but also um, kind of here, the sense of wanting to bring out um, the fact that you know, the acceptance or kind of the, the semblance of acceptance of industry kind of in this period, uh, kind of which is you know, about um, these uh, chimney stacks uh, featuring in uh, the backdrop of the painting, is something uh, which is quite an insidious process and something that you know, I want to kind of question here kind of and, and bring out. So the, these uh, kind of elements, and of course, um, President Macron has already been mentioned today. Um, kind of in terms of you know, making our planet great again, but the, the sorts of contemporary discourse kind of which uh, kind of are very striking at the moment. We can think about um, the IPCC statement where we, that we've just had at the beginning uh, kind of, of October, um, you know, which is you know, about the importance of maintaining uh, kind of a level of increase in global temperature of no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and the, the issues kind of about talking about industry, talking about air pollution, talking about you know, uh, CO2 productions, and which seem very present to us now, kind of, and particularly kind of a, a phenomenon of our contemporary moment, we can look back to the 19th century and indeed beyond, as you know, we're going to be seeing in Pauline's paper imminently. Um, we can look back kind of, to learn kind of, about these phenomena and to put them into kind of, a longer time scale um, so that uh, kind of, we can have a, a better understanding kind of, of how uh, the development of the industry shaped not only kind of the landscape kind of and kind of our being in the landscape uh, but also discourses about the green agenda which are very present today thank you very much everyone